Okay, folks, um, that was unfortunate. I just did seven minutes of video and crashed or something on me. So we're gonna start from the beginning here. And unfortunately, I just, all my records are on the floor. Something you don't wanna see. Your prized album's sort of like almost trampled underfoot. Anyway, so here we go. Excuse me, here we gotta get this all. All right, so. Uh, we're gonna show you the Rush collection today, what I, what I have anyway. And um, start with, well, I don't have the first album. One of these days I hope to pick it up because I really like the album a lot. This is Rush Fly By Night. Fantastic album cover. I told a lot of stories about the albums and I'm gonna keep the history more brief on this one because I don't know how much time I've actually got. Um, the next album, these things got all mixed up, so bear with me here. It's Crest of Steel. I love the inner sleeve of that. Very Lord of the Rings, you know, in their medieval sort of stage. And um, apparently wasn't super well received, but actually was a personal favorite of mine. I love Crest of Steel. At one point, I listened to it a lot more than even this album, which is... Uh, um, actually, you know, this is one of the first Rush albums I ever heard. The first two Rush albums I ever heard was, was Permanent Waves, which came out in 79, and then this album was when I heard after that. And so, 2112, that's a fantastic record. Uh, they solidified their sort of Rush sound, you know, their angry, young, philosophically uh, sci-fi inspired lyrics sort of themes. And, uh, 2112, a lot of people really love that album and I have to agree, it's one of my personal favorites. So uh, next after 2112 was Farewell to Kings. I really like this record. Um, been learning to play some of the songs on that over the years. Um, anyway, yeah, if you look on, with these videos you'll see I posted The Cinderella Man, which is on that album. Um, working on that. I'm just starting to relearn it, so bear with me as I try to figure out how to play these songs again after not doing them for a while. This is Rush Hemispheres, another fantastically cool sort of album with the three brains on the cover. <laughs> and uh, there they are again, you know, real happy to be in Europe recording uh, what was probably the most ambitious prog rock album ever and they got a little sick of it so uh, this looks like the one that fell on the floor ouch don't want that to happen anyway so this is Rush Permanent Waves and uh, my slightly worn copy now and um, the vinyl's in good condition I love that album. That's the first Rush album I ever heard. And then, of course, this album uh, just totally blew my brain out of the water. It was uh, Moving Pictures, fantastic cover. Following that was The Signals record. And, uh, yep, yeah, great album, too. And uh, Grace Under Pressure. Uh, a lot of people have mixed feelings about this record. I love the album cover. It was was done by Hugh Syme, who did a lot of graphics for Rush. He continues to do work for them. I don't know if he's done all the covers, but I'd say, you know, 80% of a lot of their album covers were some... Hugh Syme probably had a hand in the art design and or the... This is a painting of his, which is looks like it might have a little bit of airbrush or something in it. I don't know. It's amazing. It's a great painting. Hugh Syme has played keyboards in uh, the Ian Thomas band and played keyboards with Rush, actually. Um, let me just think now. On this album and previous albums before that. Um, what else came out after that? I guess um, I had Hold Your Fire, but it's, it's in uh, Nelson. This is uh, Power Windows. This actually, that dude, the guitar player, uh, I'll show you just, uh, here's the same guy on the, Alex Lifeson. So that's his son, actually. I didn't know that when this came out, but that's Alex Lifeson's son. 
on the cover. Another really amazing cover. Very likely designed by Hugh Syme. I think I'm pretty sure, 100% sure he did. And um, that's a painting. Holy crap, looks like a photograph. You know, that's a painting by Hugh Syme. And uh, once again, probably have some airbrush. Or the next album I have in the, I'm missing a few. I got some cassettes I'm gonna show real quick. This is Rush uh, Presto. And I never really um, listened to it as much as some of the earlier stuff, but I know it's really good. It's Some would say they were kind of getting into a thinner sound, you know, a little bit, a lot more synths and not so much, you know, bottom end. So I'm sleepy eyed and uh, kind of happy to have the studio to myself for the next two hours. And there's always something to do here. So I'm going to record some musical instruction videos. And for those who are interested in learning how to play some of this stuff, because it's fun to play. Not this music, but this stuff here. So we got, um, I'm going to show you just for fun, because you know my cassettes are the pride and joy of my collection too. Impressive steel on cassette. I mean that's great to have you down at the beach and have a Walkman or traveling on the bus. I love to listen to that on the Walkman. Uh, I've got uh, trying to keep them in chronological order. I got a lot of 80s and 90s stuff with the Rush. I was so stoked, as a matter of fact, to get this. And, well, it was pretty much brand new. This was sealed in the plastic. It should have kept it sealed. It would have been good to show you that, but. Counterparts, that's an album I don't have on vinyl. I have this on vinyl, but that's nice to have two power windows. Roll the bones. That's it folks, um, that's the Rush collection that I have here on the West Coast, so um, signing off, hope everybody enjoyed that.